On today's episode of The Lucid Lens, David Grush's attorney, former Inspector General of the Intelligence Community, Chuck McCullough, is no longer representing David Grush. He is now, in fact, working for an aerospace company. Hmm. Former Rear Admiral of the Navy, Tim Gallaudet, says that uh, there's different types of non-human intelligence visiting us whose intentions we do not know. Also, former Deputy Secretary of Defense Christopher Mellon opens fire on the recent Aero report from the Pentagon. Apparently, Aero did not even attempt to answer the basic questions Congress mandated it investigate in this report. Let's go. There's footage and records of objects in the skies that we don't know exactly what they are. Intelligence representative at a high level from the US government is saying publicly, we are not alone. Greetings, beautiful people, you marvelous citizens of the planet Earth, and welcome to The Lucid Lens. I'm just a normal dude who last year became fascinated with this UFO UAP topic, and I'm just so confused why more people aren't as interested. I mean, yeah, it's slowly kind of working its way through the zeitgeist, and, you know, we saw it with Super Bowl ads, and, uh, you know, UFOs have always been part of our culture, at least since the 40s, but... After we've had such big names come forward this past year, I am just kind of just gobsmacked why more people aren't paying attention to this, why the legacy media isn't covering it. Well, they might be covering it, but they're not investigating it like they should be, partially because they don't want to you know, break ties with, with the DOD, which is stupid. It's not their job. Anyway, but, you know, it's it's really, it's it's going to be a little bit of, grassroots campaign that's going to, you know, get this stuff pushed to the forefront. Us contacting our Congress people, which, you know, there's multiple campaigns going on, you know, the New Paradigm uh, Institute, the UAP Caucus, there's, there's a lot of different uh, groups that are working to raise awareness, but it's up to us to talk to friends and, and family and, and get past the uncomfortableness. Who gives a shit if it's uncomfortable? This is a, this is a insane topic, but I mean, look, I try to talk to everyone I know, but it's up to you to understand who you're talking to, right? You you, you know your friends, you know your family, you know your, your coworkers. You have to understand what their current headspace is. And, and some people maybe just don't necessarily talk to you. Maybe you kind of beat around, you know, the topic before you, you don't, you can't dive straight in and be like, look, man, we need to start meditating and raise the vibrational frequency of the planet. You don't understand. You can't, you can't get to like the quantum entanglement and, and how, you know, telepathy and, and all this, <laughs> you can't jump into the deep end. You must first teach these people how to swim. All right. Start with the the nuts and bolts, the flight safety, which is the approach our government is taking right now. It's it's raising awareness on that end. I mean, it took me months of research before I even went from, holy shit, this nuts and bolts stuff is real, to holy shit, <laughs> remote viewing is real. It, it is. You should try it. It's kind of cool. But, but that's besides the point. Not everybody's going to have the same journey through this topic, okay? It's going to be a long haul for some people years. I mean, and people are so impatient these days. You, you, you see it all around. So excuse the little rant. I, I just, I see the community getting angst. You know, there's, there's a lot of frustration and, and understandably so. But if this has been an 80 year cover up, covering up what we presume has been covered up, I don't think it's going to take 80 years to uncover it. I mean, the Senate Intel has been, you know, they're a few years ahead of the rest of the public, but it might take a bit. All right. Yes. Thing, big things are coming. David Grush came out of nowhere and just blew up everything. Well, not as much as it should have, but you know what I'm saying? So anyway, rant aside, I digress. If you guys are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Give it a like, give it a dislike. Leave a comment though. I mean, I want to know where you guys are at in this whole UAP UFO phenomena. It, have you been following it for years? Are you new to it? Kind of like I am. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of new based on like the Grush uh, stuff last year. The, the the hearing is really what got my attention. My wife was like, hey, there's a UFO hearing. I'm like, what? Get out of here. And yeah, then I've gone back and I've educated myself basically since then. So anyway, let's get into these stories. And uh, th th this first one, I don't know if this is a big deal or if it's a nothing burger. 
Um, but I haven't seen anyone bring it up. But uh, on the Big Thing podcast, Christian Harloff um, interviewed Danny Sheehan, uh, I believe it was a week ago. And, and Danny just casually dropped the fact that former Inspector General Chuck McCullough, who um, was representing David Grush, um, is now the former attorney of David Grush. He's apparently working for a private aerospace company. Huh. Let's let's take a quick listen. Wait, but what but what about but what about Grush's involvement in all of it? What do you where do you think where do you think he goes? What do you think that he should do? And do you think that he will again testify should we have will he get more clearance this time? Because it wasn't his fault, but one of the big frustrations with a lot of people, the regular folks, if you will, is like, well, this guy all he said is he can't talk about it behind a skiff. And I understand why he can't. He doesn't want to go to jail. Um but is there going to be more clearance of things that he could say? What do you think? What is next? What do you believe that Grush should be doing next? I, I don't. I don't. Uh, I'm not counsel to to David. Okay. Uh, that uh, you know he uh, that uh, Chuck McCullough was his attorney uh, and advises him on what to do. And okay. Uh, I don't. I don't know that, that Chuck is now left uh, and has gone to some private aerospace company working. So. I'm not. I'm not uh, sure who is legally representing David at the present time. Okay. Uh, and, and and I know that you know that I just know that people cannot allow you know who is going to hire him or you know who's going to pay him or which group is he going to be support. You know he he is providing information that is of importance to the public. Uh, and the House and Senate both know about him. Uh, that uh, he has been instrumental in providing the names and. Uh, contact information for other witnesses whom he had interviewed earlier. I'm going to stop it right there. Cause I, cause I don't know if Christian just didn't catch that or if he didn't think it was, you know, anything, but, and, and, and by the way, go check out the big thing. If, if, if you're watching my video, I'm sure you know about the big thing on Christian Harloff and he's got another channel just on UAP down to earth is great. I, I, I watch all his stuff. I've been following him for, uh, for movie and, and pop culture stuff for a while, but I'm so, I was so happy when I saw he was, you know, working on, uh, or, or, you know, following the UAP subject as well. So anyway, so they just kind of glossed over this. Oh, yeah, Chuck McCullough is no longer, you know, representing Grush. He's working for a private aerospace company. That would be like a Boeing or a Lockheed. These are, that's a defense contractor, potentially, right? Why would the former inspector general of the intelligence community come back out of retirement, I think, come back to a law firm and represent Grush, then stop representing Grush. And then now he's working for, I'm, I'm, I'm presuming providing legal counsel to a private aerospace company. That seems like a big deal to me, right? I mean, no. I mean, it seems like Grush either, you know, no longer required representation. Maybe he's at that point where he didn't, which I don't know. I, I, or, or McCullough's services were more, urgently needed elsewhere and Grush will just acquire, you know, another attorney. Um, but regardless, Charles McCullough is now working for an unknown aerospace company. And I'm presuming when Danny Sheehan says he's working for means providing legal counsel, because that's his area of expertise, right? Intelligence and, uh, and legal. So could this be a signal that a private aerospace company is preparing to step forward with UAP materials or, or reverse engineer? Like, I mean, it certainly seems like that could be on the table or perhaps, you know, it's to help n negotiate, you know, because right. Remember, Sheehan said that they're currently negotiating eminent domain and, and intellectual property rights, uh, how this material and recover technology, how could they, you know, make money on it? I, I mean, compensation for the research they've done or, or, or in the event that government, you know, exercises eminent domain and, and just takes these materials and maybe Chuck McCullough just is, has, you know, has enough knowledge of the overall situation and, you know, is a legal mind. So maybe his expertise is needed to help, you know, really get in the um, nitty gritty and help negotiate this stuff. And, and if so, that's great, because that means that we are actually moving forward in this discussion, right? Um, I don't know. It, it sounded to me like there should have been a bigger reaction to that news. But I I mean, I'm on, you know, most I mean, I check Twitter and, and, and Reddit and, you know, a couple other spots. I mean, I've been busy this past week, so I didn't, you know, I, maybe I missed something. But I, I, I swear, I don't I didn't see this called out. I don't even think Christian followed up on it. I was just like, wait a minute, that could be like a 
big thing. And Sheehan just casually just dropped that. So I don't know. What do you guys th- does do you think like that could be something that's going like or or am I just reading too much into that? I don't know. It seems like to me that that could be something. All right. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Next story I want to cover. Um, Tim Gallaudet, retired Rear Admiral of the Navy, and also um, headed up uh, NOAA, which is the uh, National Oceanic um, Atmospheric something. Or, I can't remember the acronym. There's too many freaking acronyms. But anyway, uh, he, he um, was interviewed on Liberation Times. This is a man who is... His credibility is up there. He's held some insanely high positions in the in the government and military. And he's come out now multiple times and he keeps dropping these little nuggets of what he's been told by people he knows and trusts that are in the government. So there's a couple of things in this article. It's, you know, he, Tim Gallaudet wants to look in the oceans for UAP and evidence of higher non-human intelligence because I know the area really well. I know all the collection systems out there and the universities and government agencies that do ocean exploration and research. I want to pursue the study of UAP in the oceans to add to the overall body of knowledge. Why just limit ourselves to looking up when we know if we look below, we'll find that evidence too. So, and Gallaudet's been talking with, you know, submariners, you know, uh, still active duty and some retired who've been sharing firsthand experiences they've had with USOs that have been detected through sophisticated military sensors. And, and he talks to one who w- was in the Atlantic Ocean uh, during a significant storm where you had 40 foot waves. The, the waves mix up the water, and create a lot of noise, uh, making it hard for submarines to find each other. Right. So they didn't expect to see any contacts because of that state the sea was in. But the submarine encountered an object that started closing in on it rapidly. It was coming at them so fast, they, every indication was that it was a Russian torpedo. And, th- and th- this story takes place back in the 80s, okay? The crew had trained for the scenario, but it didn't make any sense for the submarine, Russian submarine to be in that area and to be able to detect them because of the high noise and sea state. So they were surprised and they ended up taking evasive maneuvers. They dove near the crushing depths of the submarine. But then the object slowed down as it approached and went around the submarine to the stern and began slowly trailing it. It trailed it for a time, then rapidly moved out of the area. It it had no explanation. Our technology couldn't do that. The Russians didn't have that in the 80s, nor do they have it now, so it couldn't be explained. Uh, And again, it's just another, yes, anecdotal story, but when you've gotten hundreds if not thousands of these stories there's there's so much smoke at this point but this is the thing in this story that really just um kind of you know gal that just keeps going bigger and bigger with with um the information he's putting out there and he says i know from the people i trust who have had access to some of these programs that there are different types of non-human intelligence visiting us whose intentions we do not know I guess it's what you'd expect when you think about the nature of life just on this planet. So why wouldn't it be different for species that are higher, are of higher intelligence than us? It's not a real stretch when you consider the diversity of life on this planet. Yeah, makes absolute sense. It, we, we still don't understand their intentions, which is worthy of serious research and discussion instead of putting our heads in the sand. I mean, yeah, we, we need more people like Tim Gallaudet coming forward and just Fuck the stigma. Just, yes, this is what we're hearing. Yes, it sounds kind of crazy, but this is what our freaking trained military is running into. And they have been running into it for decades. Is 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 everybody crazy? Are all of our sensors <laughs> malfunctioning at, at simultaneously? I mean, it's absurd. But yeah, I mean, another <laughs> confirmation that there's more than one uh, type of you know, non-human intelligence, alien, extraterrestrial, ultra-terrestrial, time travelers, whatever the fuck they are. There's more than one. So, yeah, that was, uh, yeah. <laughs> and I think um, I was just watching this morning, uh, Need to Know, uh, Bryce Sable and uh, Ross Coldhart. They, and they actually dug into this a little bit as well. Um, yeah, so just, you know, Tim Gallaudet seems to know people, people are confiding in him that have worked in these programs that are studying this stuff. Some of these special access programs. 
which is news. You know, um, he's mentioned that he's had folks, you know, confide in him, you know, um, experiences and, and other stories, but not that he actually knows people in these programs. So that's uh, that's a new new bit of news. Um, so, yeah, what do you what do you guys think? I mean, is it just another drop in the bucket of, um, yeah, we're not alone. And nope, there's more than just one type. And we've, you know, Danny Sheehan's gone on and said, oh, there's, you know, five types we know about. But, you know, going back through the the decades, there's, you know, oh, gosh, it's some of some of the older researchers, which I, I forgive me, I'm, I'm, I'm forgetting some names, but um, there's like hundreds potentially of different kinds, right? If there's one other intelligence out there besides us, then there's likely an infinite amount, basically. That's that's kind of how I'm seeing it. Um, anyway, let me guys know what you think. So uh, this next story, our main story, is um, Christopher Mellon just absolutely annihilating Arrow, but... We, we all saw when that report came out, they were getting just completely pounded. You know, there's there's errors within, you know, uh, Senator Reed's state was listed, I think, as New Mexico or, or, or instead of Nevada. You've had um, Mellon just absolutely annihilates it because not only did you have small errors like that, you had just dozens of years that were incorrect. You had dates that were incorrect. You had entire, like, uh, known encounters completely just ignored and glossed over. I mean, this was more than just the Condon Report 2.0. This was like, I, I don't even know. But like, so the real crux of all of this is that Arrow was legally required by Congress in this historical report. This wasn't just, we would like a historical report. There were very specific things lined out that Congress mandated Arrow investigate and, and, and look into. They wanted a detailed history of UAP sightings as recorded in the U.S. government's historical records. But instead, Arrow decided to provide a limited history of the flawed U.S. government investigations of UAP. So Congress basically wanted them to ignore Blue Book, you know, for the sake of this part of the report. Ignore, you know, grudge sign, look at the data, look at all the cases, look at all the sightings, give us a historical report on that, Be, you know, give us a thorough historical report on that. All Arrow did was basically repeat what project, the conclusions that Project Blue Book came to. They didn't cite any of the data, they didn't provide any of the examples, they didn't look into numerous instances of scientific witnesses and sensor data, they literally just repeated the conclusions of the Condon report, where even the Condon report in the actual meat of the report had conflicting evidence pointing to this being a real phenomena, not explained by misidentification of sightings. So they, they didn't even do a <laughs> they didn't even like improve upon what the Condon report did. It was it was even worse. So so they had to provide a, a, uh, a history, a detailed history of UAP sightings. Also, they had to include a compilation and itemization of the key historical record of the involvement of the intelligence community with unidentified anomalous phenomena, including any efforts to obfuscate, manipulate public opinion, hide or otherwise provide incorrect, unclassified, or classified information. So basically investigate any uh, signs of a disinformation campaign. Why Why was the stigma pushed out? Why were people encouraged not to talk about this? That was basically Blue Book's whole MO, right? There wasn't even a, a single mention of the word stigma. Meanwhile, you've got former OSI officer Richard Doty spreading disinformation, admittedly. J. Allen Hynek's change of tune after he left Project Blue Book. But they didn't investigate any of that. They didn't even reach out to subject matter experts to consult with on this. I mean, this this report that Christopher Mellon, and he, he, he says at the, uh, the bottom of it that he had help. Because this, this is more thorough than Arrow's report. He provided evidence in cases that did have 
data and, and, and things that should have been looked into. This this was so bad. I, I mean, he just rips them to shreds. I, so I, I again, like, what was even the point of this? Who is this for? Because it's not fooling anyone that's read it. Is it just is it just to keep the mainstream media from like? But I, I don't understand. There's one section in here I, I wanted to um, to read. So, I mean, they didn't even bother to look at documented cases with sensor data. They completely omitted uh, the Nimitz incident. Just, no, no, well, now let's just not even talk about that. Uh, so, there's one section in here I really want to get into. Arrow fails to define what evidence it would accept for extraterrestrial UAP. So Arrow also fails to define what evidence is required to establish e ET intelligence visiting Earth. Would multiple sensors tracking an object from high altitude or space that stops and starts with accelerations greater than thousands of Gs be at least a starting definition of evidence for non-human or extraterrestrial intelligence? Likewise, Arrow complains more broadly that it needs sufficient data in UAP cases, but, but that never explains what exactly is considered sufficient data. Does it require direct communication with ET intelligence to satisfy Arrow's unstated but seemingly shifting definition of evidence? What if the ET simply refuse to communicate? Do we just pretend to ignore them until they do? Is that a responsible operational defense posture or intelligence collection and analysis policy? What radio signals have been received from UAP in the reports Arrow has collected? Arrow's briefing slides to Congress and on its website state that it has cases of UAP transmitted radio signals in the 1 to 3 and 8 to 12 gigahertz frequency bands. And this is completely separate and different from UAP radar beams, which are also listed. This has been briefed to Congress and listed in Arrow reporting trend slides of typically reported UAP characteristics, but it's not mentioned in the report. Are these UAP radio signals a communication? What analysis has been undertaken? Has Congress been informed of the fine? I mean, he just goes on and on and on. He's more thorough in this than they were in their report. And they had a team of how many people working on this? I mean, I don't know how many people Mellon had helping him out, but regardless, it doesn't matter. They didn't. They weren't paid to, to, to do this. Era was. Era was funded. They were mandated by Congress to, to actually do something. And they didn't do shit. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Like, I mean, I, I already talked about this before, but the fact that it's it's so thorough. I mean, it's it, go go to the debrief. I don't even know if I mentioned this was on the debrief, but they 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 broke a lot of stories. Um, I believe this is where uh, Grush's initial story broke before he was on uh, News Nation with Ross Coldheart. Um, so definitely go support them. But wow, I mean, Mellon just lays it all out. And I hope that Congress, the UAP caucus, are briefed on this this report. I hope their aides, their their staff, are aware of this, and I'm I'm sure they are being made aware of this because they're this week, they are supposed to be getting a classified briefing on uh, the report by Arrow, and I believe so. They're getting like the cl full classified version of the report now. And I believe it's going to be open for like, you know, discussion. So they're, they're going to be able to go in and ask questions, you know, beyond the scope of what the report is. So I hope they're going in there armed to the teeth with questions like, why didn't you cover the Nimitz incident? What about the hundreds of other censor uh, cases that we, we know? They're in the public domain. We know about them. So I'm sure there's even more information that the government has. How come your investigation didn't involve actually investigating anything? All you did was ask these agencies, did you have anything? Nope. Okay. Thank you. See you later. Like, really? That's the investigation that we paid for into this? Really? Ooh, I, I hope that this SCIF briefing that Congress gets, well, it, it's going to be more than a briefing, I guess. It's, it's, hopefully Congress goes in there and just starts pounding them because I mean I, don't, I and I know Moskowitz is going to be in there I'm pretty sure Askapol uh, had a clip with him this past week talking about that so uh, yeah this this could be another I don't know you, you don't have clearance to know about that but did Arrow even have clearance to really dig into stuff that's the whole thing is like 
Arrow is still kind of at the mercy of being under the executive with which doesn't want disclosure at this time. You know, multiple people have said that. I think even, you know, Tim Gallaudet, um, I don't think I talked about it, but in the Liberation Times article, he he mentioned that Arrow can't step forward until the executive branch, you know, basically allows them to. And with the election and so many other, you know, conflicts going on right now, I don't know. I, I just hope things don't get so much worse before this is like brought forward to as like a trump card to like, get people to, you know, wake up and, and stop murdering each other. But oh, it's kind of gloomy. I don't want to end on that note. Oh, man. A- anyway, what do you think is going to happen at this skiff? Like, I mean, well, the last one, they seem to get a decent amount, but that was from the intelligence community inspector general um, that gave them some threads to go pull on. They seem pretty enthusiastic after that last one. I don't know. We'll see what happens after this one. I'll definitely uh, put up a video cover on it because I'm sure uh, the News Nation is going to be there. I'm, I'm sure uh, Ask a Poll is going to be there. And I mean, the last time we had CNN, Fox, um, a couple others were also out there, Axios. So uh, we shall see. All right, that'll do it for this one. I'll see you guys on the flip side. Peace. <laughs>